Hello, it's Dawn Michelle from Boho Tarot, and today I wanted to share with you the Black Cat Tarot written and illustrated by Helena D. Alameda. Helena says this tarot was born after meditation. She writes, I started to ask the universe for professional guidance and I visualized a black cat. When I started drawing this deck, the colors came naturally. It seemed that I was guided with every stroke I drew. So this is a tarot deck that is very spiritually connected for the creator and she hopes that you will feel the spiritual connection as well. So the Black Cat Tarot deck comes in a nice two-piece box. You can see here we have the lovely Black Cat illustration on the front and a little bit about the deck and the creator's inspiration behind it. So before we jump into the deck, let's take a look at these beautiful backs. We have the lovely little black background with the little cat face it is the same design that is on the front of the box. While it's not reversible, I do think it's really cute. We do have some very tiny little copyright down here at the bottom, which I think is really unobtrusive. And I do love the color scheme in this deck. I am kind of a sucker for decks with a minimal color palette, and I do think this one is quite beautiful. So let's go ahead and jump into these cards. So here we have our fool and you will definitely see that this deck follows the Waitsmith system so it makes it a really easy reader and all the cards are very recognizable. We have the little kitty standing at the top of the cliff with her little bag of goodies ready to go. Here we have the magician, all the little emblems ready to create magic. So in this deck, pretty much the cat takes the place of what we would traditionally see as figures in this deck. So here we have the high priestess and we have our black and white pillars. I love the fact that she's sitting atop the staircase. She's got her little book of knowledge in her hand. Here's our beautiful empress surrounded by a field of flowers. I think that's just beautiful. And our emperor, again, atop a mountain. We can kind of see the semblance of a throne behind him, which I think is really cool. Here we have our hierophant. We see a little kitty sitting in a chair, but we have the eye of Ra behind him. So really interesting, tying into that idea of spirituality, but not so much sinking into the dogma aspects that we tend to find in some decks. Here we have our lovers, which kind of harkens back to a Marseille style, where we have our two lovers down here in kind of this angelic-like, or almost kind of looks like a bat in this cage, which I think is really cool, the figure kind of looming overhead. So here we have our chariot, we have our little kitty being drawn by black and white horses, which I think is really cool. Here we have our justice. So in this deck, justice is at position eight which I do quite like. I love the idea that we have the scales on one side of the owl on the other. So I get a little hint of that karmic balance in here, which I think is really cool. So here's our hermit where we have the kitty just encased in this cloak, has this little lantern, and we definitely get the idea that he's kind of going into the cave. I think that's super cute. I love this Wheel of Fortune with the cats all along the sides. So we definitely get that idea of change, things constantly turning, things constantly in motion. Here's our strength at position 11, where we have the little black cat sitting on top of the lion. And I just love the little look on the lion's face. I think it's super cute. He definitely looks like he's looking at that cat like, what are you doing up there? <laughs> really cute. So here's our hanged man with the little kitty hanging by his one little foot. Definitely a traditional hanged man, and I think it works quite well. Here we have our death card, which is quite interesting because we kind of have this like pile up of death and bones behind him. And then we have the cat, this kind of this Grim Reaper figure, and we can see all of his little bones. I mean, it's just a really cute representation of death. This is just a very cute little deck. So here we have our temperance card. I really love this card. I love the swirly sun. I love the flowers and we get the kitty that kind of has a mane of a lion. So I really love that kind of play. I don't know if that's like intentional or just something that I'm picking up on, but it kind of feels like that's the lion's mane from our um, strength card. Like maybe a little bit. It just feels like a cat with a lion's mane. So we have the lion, we have the little um, halo above his head. So kind of bringing in that primal nature and that angelic nature. And he does have the little cups with the water pouring back and forth, which is cute. So here we have our devil card and we have our two little kitties on leashes being controlled by the little devil kitty. I mean, it's just cute, right? It's just an adorable deck. 
So here we have our tower where we see our traditional kind of tower imagery with the little kitties falling out of it. I love that this tower is, while it definitely looks like we've been kind of shattered here, we have some little um, explosion going on in the background. This tower is still quite stable and I do definitely like to see that in my tower cards. Really cute. Beautiful little star card. I love all of the play of flowers and the stars. We have the water, which I think is really important. We have the cups, um, one going into the water, one going into the land, which is actually flowing down into the water again. So really beautiful little star card. Lots of really great little symbolism in this deck. Here we have our beautiful moon card and we see the little dogs on either side with the cat in the middle. You can see the tie in to kind of that crayfish or almost looks like a scorpion tail back here. So tying in that energy as well that we see on traditional cards. Love the moon. And again, it just it's the minimal color palette is just, I think, really striking in this deck. So here we have the sun card with our happy little kitties. I love that the sun is smiling, it's just adorable. And we have the little notes, they're singing, they're happy. Everything is beautiful and good and joyous. And I think that embodies the sun beautifully. So here we have Judgment, which does harken back to a traditional Judgment card, but kind of just makes me giggle when I see it. We have the kitty up here, um, kind of reminiscent of Gabriel that we see in our traditional cards and the cat here kind of coming out of the coffin. It is very much a traditional card, but it's it's a super cute take on it. And finally, we have our world, again, kind of following that traditional sense here. We have the little ring of flowers, the circle in the middle, and the cat in the center, bringing all the things together into one. Quite lovely. So moving into our minors, we have our Ace of Wands here with our single wand, a little cat paw holding it up. These mountainous figures almost look like cats in themselves, like silhouettes of cats. I don't know if that's intentional or I'm just seeing cats everywhere now, but I think it's really interesting. So here we have our Two of Wands. Here's our Three of Wands. I love this where the... Um, where we have this big kind of glowy background and the cat is just the silhouette with the sun above. I just think that's really beautiful. I like the wands, how she's designed the wands as well in this deck. So here we have our four of wands, getting that idea of really stability and harmony and happiness. And I think that works really beautiful. One of the things I really like about this deck is that you do not have to stick to a strictly Waitsmith interpretation for these cards. You can definitely read it a little bit more numerologically and elementally, which is how I like to read. So I do appreciate that. So here we have our five of wands. And I love the fact that these cats don't necessarily look like they're fighting. They could be also practicing, right? I like how that's open to interpretation. It's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, struggle isn't always bad. Challenge isn't always bad. Strife isn't always bad. And I love that we kind of get that sense in this card of, you know, they're definitely like dueling, but are they practicing or are they fighting? Um, I think that's that's wonderful how it's open to interpretation. Here's our little six of wands with our cat riding the horse, definitely getting that idea of victory with the little um, trophy here. But I love how the six wands are very imbalanced. I think that's really wonderful when you're looking at reading a little bit more um, numerologically. So here we have our seven of wands. It definitely looks like this little kitty is standing his ground. It's really wonderful. Our eight of wands. The thing I really like about this Eight of Wands is that we do see the traditional kind of wand swooping across the sky, but we do have this cat just sitting here kind of waiting as things, you know, kind of shoot across the sky above him. Um, you know, he does feel very grounded and very stable, which is, I think, very indicative of the number eight. And I love seeing that energy represented. We still get the, the traditional sense and the movement through the wands coming through the air, but I love the groundedness that is brought in through this cat really sitting and being quiet and being still. And I think that works really beautifully. Here's our nine of wands. I love the cat peeking out behind the little um, little peak here of the little mountain or the hill or the bush or whatever it is that, that he's hiding behind. He's like peeking out. He's ready to ready to defend. Here we have our ten of wands. Again, not 
tying in so strictly to that Rider Waite Smith, which I really love, um, we could definitely pick up that sense of, of burden and responsibility that we tend to see in the RWS, but we're not limited to that. You know, he's carrying that load. He's he's going to get across that that divide there, and he's going to do whatever it is that he needs to do to, to keep moving forward, and I think that's beautiful. Here we have our page of wands. Again, quite love this interpretation. This page really being at one with his wand. I think that's beautiful. Our knight of wand going out on his adventure. I love that he's like wearing a little mask. So cute. So here's our beautiful queen of wands. I think she's quite lovely. And our king of wands. I love that we have the little salamander here tying in. And he definitely looks like he has a lion's mane, which I think is really, really wonderful. So moving into our cups, we have our Ace of Cups. Again, we have that same central figures that we were seeing in the um, Ace of Wands. But here we have the cup in the center, and I love the two-sided heart. I think that's really beautiful. Here we have our Two of Cups. Again, kind of falling back to that traditional. And I do love that it does tie back into that Lover's Card energy, which is really fantastic. Beautiful Three of Cups with the celebration. I love all the little music notes in this deck as well. I think that's really cute. This Four of Cups I think is pretty amazing. I love that the cat almost looks like he's not bored. He's not disillusioned. He's kind of like sitting in contemplation. I really get this idea that this cat is kind of cultivating some stability from within from an emotional standpoint and that resonates really well with the way that I read the four of cups but I think you could definitely still pick up on that Rider Waite Smith interpretation if that's the way that you read I love that about this this card and this deck so here we have our five of cups really interesting that he's in the boat I tend to think of that more with the six of cups energy but I do love that we have the two cups on the side here standing up and the three cups down in the water it really speaks to that idea of disruption works really well for me and here we see our six of cups i love the little the little happy party going on beautiful little card here we have our seven of cups and we definitely get the idea of this little kitty is trying to decide what to do next really cute there's our Eight of Cups. I love the idea of kind of moving forward. Definitely can pick that up in this card. We see these cups are kind of behind him and he's moving on to his new journey with this bright, beautiful sun shining in the background. I think that's lovely. Here we have our Nine of Cups. Really interesting depiction for the Nine because we have this secondary kitty coming out and is kind of like in this halo or encased in this circle of cups. I think that's really fascinating. Here we have our 10 of cups, again, tying into that traditional imagery of kind of happiness and contentment, and I think it works really well. There's our page of cups. I love this imagery with the sun looking out over the water. We do see the little fish in the cup over here, which I think definitely ties us back into that traditional imagery. But I just really love the way that she's depicted these cards. Here we have our Knight of Cups going on our next adventure. Again, the little knight is wearing a mask, which I think is really cool. We have these like little, little, um, bits of water here these little water droplets with like little eyes watching them just cute so here we have our queen of cups i love how she has all the little animals around her we see the lion from the strength card we have the owl from the justice card um, i'm wondering if there's going to be some little rabbits and a little chicken maybe is that what that is at some point really cute and here we have our King of Cups. Again, I love that we have the water here. He's on his throne and he has the big lion's mane, kind of giving that idea of being, you know, the king of your, king of your domain. So here we have our Ace of Swords. Interesting that the sword has a little paw print emblems. That's kind of cute. So our Two of Swords, again, kind of traditional imagery, really the idea of kind of making choice. I love the fact that this little kitty is like on an island and we have two other islands in the background. I think that's really interesting. 
Here we have our Three of Swords. Now again, this is a very traditional with the Three Swords piercing the heart. Again, as I've mentioned in multiple videos, that's not really how I read the Three of Swords. But I love the fact that it's kind of above the cat's head. So it does kind of give the idea of growth of the mind, which is how I see the Three of Swords. So I can work with that. Here we have our Four of Swords. And I love that we have the two swords kind of on the bed hanging out. And we have the two on this wall behind him, giving that idea of, you know, resting, but there is still more to do. Like at some point he needs to pick up those swords and move on. Here's our five of swords. Again, I love that the disruptive energy that we get through the fives, but it's not necessarily so negative, right? I believe that any card can be positive or negative, And I love when the cards are really open to that interpretation. Love the six of swords with the cat on the like little bird taking flight. I think that's just fantastic. Here's our Seven of Swords, again, kind of tying in that traditional energy with that sort of thiefy look. But again, as I've mentioned with other sevens, we don't know what exactly that little cat's doing. And so that's kind of the lesson of the seven is to not, not make assumptions. Here we have our Eight of Swords. I love this. We have a one cat here that's kind of looking toward this cat who's surrounded by swords but could very easily slip between any of them. Interesting that we have multiple cats in this um, particular card. And I do love that the bushes kind of create some symmetry. Um, and some harmony and balance in this eight. I think that's really lovely. So here we have our nine of swords with that kind of traditional nightmarish type energy. We have the little kitty in the bed with all the swords around the head area, speaking to that dynamic mental energy. This is a really interesting 10 of swords. I do quite like it. We have all the 10 swords here just kind of plunked down into the ground. And we have this sort of comet or moon or sort of celestial energy that's pulling the little kitty up. Now the kitty does not necessarily need to be dead or look dead. It's just the idea of kind of moving forward, growing from the lessons you've learned. And I really like this depiction for that. So here we have our little page of swords with our little kitty who's got his sword drawn. He's ready to go. We have our knight on horseback. Again, looks like he's definitely ready to go out there and, you know, put his put his thoughts and his beliefs into action. Here we have our queen of swords. She definitely looks like she is full on in her power. I love that she has the little owl here because that kind of speaks to that inner wisdom as well, which I think is really lovely. Here we have our king of swords and he has a little, looks like a little falcon or an eagle. Again, with that big, beautiful lion's mane. I love that, that she's included that in all of our kings. So moving on to my favorite suit, the pentacles. We have the ace of pentacles with the little cat pentacle in the cup. Really interesting, kind of a, almost looks like a um, trophy type of a cup with the pentacle sitting on top. So here we have our two of pentacles and I love that it's like a little magician cat who's kind of manifesting these two um, pentacles. It really kind of brings a little element of magic to the card, which I do quite appreciate. So here we have our three of pentacles. I love this idea of collaboration. All three of these kitties are helping to kind of maybe put these little pentacles in the tree. I just think that's really cute. We also see down here, there's a little ant hill and these little ants, as we know, ants are very cooperative little creatures. And I love that we have that down there as well. So here we have our four of pentacles and I love this idea of it's not just about being um, a miser and hoarding your resources. This could be just also about this kitty kind of come taking his resources in and taking a look at what he's got and making sure that he has what he needs to survive the winter because it definitely looks like there's a winter landscape maybe going on outside. Maybe it's getting ready to snow. Um, that could just be the way I'm perceiving it. I think it's a really nice depiction for the Four of Pentacles because it definitely ties into the idea of resources and taking what you need. But if you read it in more of a Rider Waite Smith um, interpretation where you're looking at more of a hoarding energy or a being a miser with your resources and your money, Money, then that also works as well. Here we have our five of pentacles, which I think is just kind of a little bit of a heartbreaking card, which is what a five should be. We have all of these people inside the little houses and they're happy and warm. And then we have this one little kitty out here all by himself. So here's our six of pentacles. I think this is a really beautiful um, imagery for the six of pentacles, really that idea, not so much of charity, but um, as of exchange. And I think that works really well for the six of pentacles. 
So here we have our seven of pentacles and I love this little tree. It looks like he has a little face with his little hand and he looks like he's offering the little kitty his pentacle. So really speaks to the idea of, of waiting for things to come into fruition, right? Of having patience and waiting for things to be given rather than just taking before time, the time is ready. I think that's really beautiful. So here we have our eight of pentacles and I quite like this little card. There's a little rabbit. There's another rabbit. There might've been other rabbits I wasn't paying attention to. You can see like all of these little kitties are coming and maybe they're buying cups of tea or maybe they are contributing to the community funds. Um, I just think it's a really interesting and neat interpretation for the eight of pentacles. Here we have our nine of pentacles and I love this with the cats in the hammock. There's another little rabbit. The sun is very happy. It's just a wonderful little heartwarming card. And here we have our 10 of pentacles and interesting that we have some little happy rabbits here but then we have some little figures here who maybe don't look quite so happy. So I think that it kind of actually has a little bit of a shadow energy to it as well uh, that perhaps could just be the line work but it does look to me like these little figures whatever these little things are they're not very happy about the situation. So it kind of shows us how like it can be happily ever after for somebody else that somebody else is um, not so happily ever after. So really interesting. So here we have our page of pentacles. I love these little flowers. We do have a little like lizard here, which is interesting because we tend to see those more as like salamanders in the wands. Interesting here that he's in the pentacles. I love the little kitty holding the pentacle. He's like admiring his, his work there. Here we have our knight of pentacles going off on his journey. I love that we have kind of all this dark shadowy over here, but he's kind of going into the darkness. He's going into the unknown and he's going to be, you know, getting his pentacle up there. So here we have our queen of pentacles and it feels very much like a sort of goddess card to me, which I think is really cool. Um, I feel like, you know, we have the two cats down here who feel like they are, you know, in service or in praise of the little queen of pentacles on her throne. And she feels very much part of the world. And I definitely get like an almost goddess vibe out of this, which I think is just kind of cool. And finally, we have our King of Pentacles. We can see his whole kind of community behind him and we have the people that are coming in support and in service of him. I think that's really wonderful. And he's back here on his throne. The interesting thing is he's not actually the focal point. The focal point is his kind of community that he's built down here. And I think that's really fascinating. So really interesting deck. I do have to say that when I first got this deck in, I was looking at it and I was like, oh, it's gonna be just a really, really cute deck. And really, really cute decks are great great but there is some depth to this deck um depth that I didn't really expect and I do really like the way that she has interpreted a lot of the cards in this deck I think it fits close enough to a Waitsmith um, interpretation that if that's the way that you read that it would work beautifully for that but I love that it's not totally locked into that and she has done some really interesting things with some of these cards I really like the the way that she's depicted and the the energy that she has and the um, symbolism that she's chosen to include in these cards. I think it's really fascinating. So let's talk real quick about the card stock. Um, as you might have caught when I was doing my little flip through, the um, card stock is actually kind of like a satin and there is a kind of shiny stamped, oh, I forget what they call that, foil stamping around the outside. Um, of the deck to kind of create a border, which is quite interesting. We do have the artwork in the center. There is also a decorative border around each of the cards, um, obviously black border around the outside, but I love that the borders feel very intentional. So this is a deck that where I don't mind the borders because they feel like it's a part of the design. They feel like it's a part of the artwork in a sense, an extension of it. Each of the cards has the title down at the bottom and we also have the number and kind of symbol at the top. The card size is actually closer to an oracle size than tarot size. So it's kind of, you know, a little bit shorter and a little bit fatter. I don't really feel a core in here. Um, I'm not sure it has like a, a real core to it, but it does have a nice flex to it, a nice bend, and it does feel like it's a nice kind of pretty substantial cardstock, but but thin enough that it's going to, I think, shuffle beautifully. Um, let's go ahead and give it a shuffle while we're talking about that. You can see here that I can get my hands around it, even though I have tiny hands and that's often a struggle for me. Um, they are a little bit stiff 
probably because they are new, but they do riffle shuffle well. And I think when they get broken in a little bit, they will shuffle even better. Um, they feel a little bit like a um, little bit like a thinner kind of U.S. games style of deck. Has a little bit of that feel in the hand to me. Um, not quite as thick as the U.S. games cardstock, but has a similar kind of outer feel to it. So we riffle shuffle it, of course, overhand. You know, it doesn't stick or anything. It's got a nice, nice smooth smooth um, shuffle to it. I can't quite get it my hands around to do it um, long ways, but this deck really has kind of surprised me. <laughs> I'm just going to be perfectly honest. Um, there's a lot more going on and a lot more depth in this deck than I really was expecting. I thought it was just going to be another, like, you know, a little cute little cat tarot deck and um i i really don't have any cat tarot decks because i'm not like a huge cat person but this deck has some depth to it and i do really appreciate um that about it i really appreciate the kind of attention to detail and all of the little elements that you could really dive deep into for some symbolism with this deck and i pulled a couple oracle decks that i thought might work really well with this deck um the first one that actually came to mind was the season of the witch Samhain oracle and that might just be because, again, we're looking at um, black cats. And to me, that speaks to Samhain energy. I'm just kind of curious how these work. This um, Seasons of the Witch also has kind of a restrained color palette. So I thought that might also work really well together. So here we have the Knight of Wands and the Six of Swords with the Cauldron in between. I think that um, these decks might pair together quite well just because they do, again, have that limited color palette. But I feel like the energies are pretty cohesive. So I thought this might be just a really interesting one to um, pair together just in their energies. So here we have ritual between the Hierophant and the Four of Pentacles. That is really interesting. We have similar kind of... Um, energies going on over here in these two cards where the figure here in the ritual card and the little cat here in the four of pentacles kind of both look like we're they're sitting in meditation as does kind of the hierophant interesting So while these two decks are aesthetically totally different, they have completely different art styles, I do feel like their energy is quite compatible. And I do feel like the um, Seasons of the Witch kind of brings out that um, dark side of the Black Cat Tarot. And by dark, I don't mean bad or evil. I just mean the unseen. Um, what we don't tend to see on the surface. And I think that brings that out of this deck really beautifully. So another deck that I thought might bring something really interesting out of the Black Cat Tarot is the Green Witch Oracle. So this deck really focuses on, you know, plant and magic. And I felt like that, because plants do feature quite heavily in the Black Cat Tarot, I thought that might be interesting to see how those energies play together. And I love that the um, Green Witch Oracle has those kind of ink splatters. And we have some of the sort of line work ink drawing, which I thought might tie in really well to the um, illustrated style of Black Cat Tarot. And I think that's gonna be really interesting. So here we have Cauliflower with transition between the Seven of Pentacles and the High Priestess. This is really interesting because we're looking at the energy of transition, but here in the Seven of Pentacles, we're also seeing that we need to kind of wait for that transition for the right time to maybe step into that, that High Priestess energy to really tap into our inner voice. Like you can't force it. You have to wait for those transitions to happen um, a little bit more naturally that's quite interesting <laughs> so here we have clarity between the seven of cups and the nine of pentacles get really clear about what it is that you want and where you want to end up i think that's beautiful I do quite like these two together. Um, again, very different art styles, very different themes, very different aesthetics, but I do think that they work really well together and they pull some really interesting things out of each other. So here we have duality between the Four of Swords and the Empress. 
And of course, we could be diving into the guidebook for the Green Witch Oracle and getting even more goodness out of this, but I don't want this to take forever. So we're just gonna kind of flip through and kind of go with what intuitive hits are coming. So here we have memory between the two of cups and the moon. So when we're talking about black cats here, I of course had to pull out my um, two decks that make me think of black cats which is the Everyday Witch Oracle. And we're also gonna take a look at the Everyday Witch Tarot because I'm just curious. Um, these, again, two totally different art styles, two totally different um, aesthetics, but I feel like they both have cats in them. So I feel like maybe they might, they might work out well together. So here we have an affirmation for growth in between the Queen of Pentacles and death. Um, this would probably make a lot more sense if we actually read the guidebook, but again, we would be here forever if I went into all of that. So planting the seeds between judgment and the emperor, that's quite interesting. So here we have earth magic between the world and the king of cups. So aesthetically speaking, you know, probably not the most compatible in terms of art style and the way they look on the table and all of that. You know, but really what I'm looking for when I do pairings like this is I'm really looking for more how they read, how the messages play together. Um, when they look beautiful on the table, that's just a bonus. Um, and while I do like to aesthetically pair my decks, it is most important that they read well together. So that's definitely what I'm looking at. So here we have learn from life. We have the Eight of Swords and the Ace of Pentacles. So one last pairing here, let's just split this so it's not so big, um, is the Everyday Witch Tarot and the Black Cat Tarot. Even though these are both tarots, I sometimes do like to pair tarot and tarot together. And when I think of Black Cats, this is the first deck that comes to mind. And I've really just started to get to know this deck, so, it's, it's not even one that I've had in my collection for a long time. It's one that I'm currently working with and trying to get to know. But when I think of Black Cats, this is the first deck that comes to mind. So I wanted to pull these two together to see how they look. So we have the Seven of Swords, the Nine of Wands, and the Ten of Pentacles. Again, I feel like maybe the Black Cat Tarot is kind of pulling a little bit of the darker nature out of these decks, which I think is really fascinating because in itself, it just looks like a cute cat deck. But I think, as I've said, like probably too many times in this video now, there is a lot more going on beneath the surface of this particular deck. So while these, again, may not... Um, may not artistically or aesthetically really go together really well. Um, I would be curious to see kind of to dive deeper a little bit into how the messages play out because we do have it's again when I think of black cats this is the the deck that I think of so um, I'd be curious to see what they bring out of each other and I would really have to sit and and kind of actually do some actual readings to get a better sense of that because they don't click quite as naturally as I think the Samhain and the Green Witch Oracle do but I think they could be interesting together. And if you are a person who likes cats and likes black cats, this might be a pairing that is right up your alley. So really interesting deck here with this black cat tarot. Again, as I've mentioned, like I said, too many times in this video, it's a deck that actually has kind of surprised me with the, the depth that I've been able to pull out of these cards. It's definitely a deck that I think you could just throw down and read and move on with your day if you needed to but it is also a deck that you could really stop and dive deep into each of the images. And I really like that flexibility with it. I do like the interpretation of the cards that the um, author has chosen to, how she's chosen to depict them. Um, I really do love that this deck, as she mentioned, came from a meditation. So it does feel a little, a little connected. Um, we can definitely see that here in that Queen of Pentacles. I'm really picking up that cosmic connection of being kind of divinely guided guided through this Queen of Pentacles imagery. I think that's just really beautiful. And of course, I think if you like cat decks, this is a super cute one. But sometimes when we get decks like this, we, we tend to kind of pigeonhole it into, it's it's just a cute cat deck, right? It's just a cute cat deck. But there's actually so much more going on in this deck. And I do really appreciate that about it. And I love when a deck surprises me like that. Um, I was actually just thinking I would do the walkthrough and then I would probably move this deck along. Um, I really enjoy being able to share it and look at it. 
and um, let you be able to take a look at it as well. But this is one that I think I would probably, I would like to keep in my collection and, and work with for a while because again, like I said, that depth really has kind of taken me by surprise. And I love when a deck exceeds my expectations. That's like the best thing ever. So I definitely want to thank Helena for sending me this deck to share with you today. I would love to know what your thoughts are on it. So please feel free to share with me in the comments below. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this look at the Black Cat Tarot and I look forward to seeing you again soon for more creative tarot for an inspired life.